Hey, how's it going? And today I'm doing a basic introduction, quick start to using Fusion 16. This is the studio version. There's a, another version that's a lighter version, but I would recommend considering getting the studio, Fusion Studio, just because it has camera tracking in it. And that in itself is a valuable feature to have that allows you to really do some really great special effects. So I'm just gonna walk you through some, give you some tips and tricks for getting started and hopefully this will minimize your frustration. So I'm in Fusion Studio right now and there's nothing on the screen. So to start a new project, we just go to File and we go to New. And all I'm gonna do today is show you how to put some title over a background image and that's it. I'm just keeping it simple so that I can show you some things that I wish had been pointed out to me when I was first starting. So one of the first things is the layout is very minimal and to be perfectly honest with you, this program can be a challenge to learn. Some things are intuitive and other things are not intuitive at all. So you can hit a wall with the program pretty easy and get frustrated. This is also a node based software. So that's only like a step or two above actually coding because you're having to put basically commands in every step of the way to tell the program exactly what to do. And it's a little more challenging than working in a layer based program such as After Effects. So anyway, you've got two monitors up here. You can't really see them because there's nothing there. And you've got this inspector where when you're clicked on a node, the options you have with that node will be over here. Here along the bottom, you've got the commonly used tools. And then here you've got your timeline and all that. So the first thing you might notice is you've got a thousand frames here. Well, in this case, we're only working with one frame. So if you want to get the timeline down to what we're actually working with, you just double click in this box. Just we'll just put in two. And now we've just got two frames here. OK, now the first thing you might ask yourself is, well, how do I get started? How do I get going with this? The one thing that is intuitive about the program is the way this is laid out, because the two most important nodes are right here on the bottom. The first one is Loader, which allows you to bring any media into the program. You can think of Loader as basically your input, and then you've got a Saver node, which is basically your output, your rendering node. So you basically got in and you got out and they're right in the front where you'd expect them to be. There's numerous ways to bring footage in, but the easiest way when you're just starting is just to click loader and get the file. So in this case, we're just going to be using uh, an image, a single image. So we'll click on it and we'll go open. Now here's one of the quirky things. You might think, well, you brought the image in there. It is right there. Well, where is it? Well, unfortunately, you've got to tell, you have to tell Fusion on what monitor to display it. And there's two ways you can do that. The easiest way is by clicking a one or a two. So this is number one monitor. This is number two. If you click one, it'll display right there. And you can also check these little circles down here too. So you can put the same image on both monitors. You can have it on one monitor and just click up. But the easiest way is just to hit one or two on the keyboard. There's a third circle there, and that's if you had a third monitor display. So we'll just click on the node and click one. Now, the second thing you notice is that the image is blown out. It's much larger than it needs to be. And so the second thing you need to know is control F and you hit control F and be sure you're clicked on the monitor and it'll come in the size that it's supposed to be. You can also right click to do that, but I recommend learning the, the hot key combination, control F. So that's that. So one of the most confusing things about Fusion is that knowing which node you're on and in which display that node is being displayed because which node you're selected on will obviously affect what you're going to be looking at but then it gets confusing because you don't know necessarily where you are in the sequence on the node and what that node is exactly displaying and then also it gets confusing about well do you have it on the number one monitor the number two monitor or do you even have it registered at all on any monitor so that part can get really confusing so be aware of the node you're on where the node is in the chain and which viewer you're assigning it to. And that can save you some frustration. Now, in this case, all we're gonna add is simple text on top of this photograph. So one way to do that is since it's such a common thing to do, the node is right here. So all you'd have to do is click it once and it automatically create, brings in the node and merges it. So to, to put text over an image, you need a merge node and that's basically layers them for you. So you always need a merge node. So next to the loader saver, merge is a very important node and it has a foreground component and a background component and the background, uh, the foreground is green and the background is yellow or gold color. So we, so in this case, the merge node automatically came in and it's going to put the city in the background and the text in the foreground. Okay, so now if we click on text, we don't again see anything because we haven't assigned it to a monitor. All I have to do is hit two and it's going to pop up here. And then over here are the properties for the text. So 
I could just type in something like quick start intro uh, Fusion Studio 16. Down here I have a bunch of controls. Again, it's over the, it's not scaled to fit, so I hit Control F and now it is. So I can control the size, the tracking, the line spacing, and some other dimensions here. But I don't see the text over that, and that's because I would need to be on the merge node. Now I'm, again, I'm clicked on it, but I don't see anything, and that's because I haven't told merge to display on one of the monitors. So I can click this circle, the second circle here, and it's going to pop up right there. Now that may look too small, that text, so if I got to go, I got to go back to the text node and click on it to get to its controls. I can increase the size and then I can just click on the screen actually and just drag it down like that. And it's that simple to create text over an image in, uh, in Fusion. Now one of the frustrations I had with this program is are these nodes because you have to practice with them a little bit to get comfortable with them. So let's go ahead and bring in a saver node right here and you just if you're clicked on this node and then you add a node it'll come in next in line. So if I click here, the saver node comes in and it's going to allow me to save that. Well, I have these nodes down here. If you right click, you can go scale, scale to fit too, and it'll center them for you and you can kind of get them nice and neat. But let me just talk about these nodes and how you can move them around a little bit. If you click on a node, you just hit delete and you can delete it. So that's simple. That's pretty straightforward. So you can bring it back just by clicking and bringing it back in. So that's simple. Click on any node and delete it and it's gone. Now, if you have a node like this one that's in the middle between two nodes and you want to get it out of there, you hit shift and left click and it comes out. You got to release the mouse button and then it'll detach. Now, if you want to retach it, you hit shift, left click and bring it back in. And when you see the, the yellow and the blue come up, if you let go, it'll insert it again. So to detach, you go shift, left click, up, let go of the mouse button first, and then let go of shift, and then it'll detach. And to reattach it, you hit shift, left click, bring it back in, wait till the lines change color, let go, see I, I let go wrong, let go, and it comes in in the middle. So to insert, shift, left click, to detach, shift, left click, and then to delete, you just go delete, to delete a node. And now if you have a node that's connected and you want to detach it, you simply click on the blue part and it'll detach, and to reattach it, you just click and drag to reattach it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start over here a little bit. I'm gonna delete the text again. I'll click on the background image here and I'll go add text. The other way you can add a search for any tool that Fusion offers is by hitting control spacebar. And that's a very important command to know. So let's say I wanna add shape for some reason. So I'll click here and go shape and there it comes in. Now. While I'm on this, I, I can explain one more thing that I found frustrating about the program. In Fusion, it's possible to add 3D shapes, and that is the most one of the most exciting things about it. It's not just 2D you're working with. You can work with 3D particles and things like that. But let's see here. I'm clicked on shape, and I don't see it in the monitor, and I don't because I haven't assigned it. So I'm going to assign it to number two. And now you can see the 3D space. What's confusing a little bit is learning how to navigate in this view. Now, one thing you can do if you just want to expand the view is come down here to get that and you can just drag and expand it that way. We're in a 3D space and you'll be working in 3D space. Now, if you hit control and scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. That's pretty straightforward. If you press down on your middle mouse button, you can pan up and down. But then the question is, what if you want to orbit? in 3D space, which and when you're in 3D space in a perspective view like this, that's one of the things you're really going to want to do. Well, the combination for that, which is not intuitive, is Alt and the middle mouse button. And then you can navigate in your 3D space. So I just mentioned that because I found that frustrating to not know that <laughs> how to do that. So when, when you can do this, you can do almost anything once you've got just this ability to see in the 3D space. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. Zoom is control and scroll wheel. Pan is mouse button, middle mouse button alone. And orbit is alt and the middle mouse button. And then that's the one that you probably believe would use the most. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Just throw that out there. So now let's see, I want to go back to adding text. So what I'll do is I click on city. I can hit control space bar and I can get any tool I want. Text, text, I'm sorry. Text, 3D text, here it is. 
I go add and it comes in automatically with the merge node. And again, if I hover over here, it's going to tell me that's the text is going to be in the foreground. Picture is going to be in the background. And if I click on the merge node and then hit two, it's going to pop up over here. I don't see anything because I haven't entered any text. So I can hit click on this and I'll hit two so I can see what I'm doing. And I can go quick start intro fusion studio 16 and then I can go back to click on merge hit two so I can see it and if I want to make further adjustments I can again adjust the size here I can adjust the position here and so those are the the basic things there the last thing you want to do is again render it so if I click on this node here the next node I click will go in line in the sequence. So I'll click Saver. And then what I can do is just save it to a folder like that. I can give it a name like Frame and go Save. Up here, you can browse again to where you want to go. You can choose your output, like if you want to do it as a JPEG or a PNG or whatever you want to do it as. And then you just would simply click Render. And here, go Start Render. And then it'll tell you that it's rendered out and it's complete. And it's that simple to just get started. So the main things are control plus F to, to scale to fit your images, control space to search for anything you want. Another one is F4. If you want this the one single image on the screen, control plus scroll to zoom, middle mouse button to pan, and then Alt and Middle Mouse button if I were in 3D space. And then you can hit F4 again to go back to double monitors, dual monitors. And then the other one is Shift, left click to remove, let go of the mouse button first, then let go. And then Shift, left click to reinsert once those bars appear. And then just delete any node that you want. And so once you know those kind of those basics, you're able to get around, get in, get out, and start manipulating. So one of the things I would say is just get familiar with those hotkey keys. Don't be afraid to get in here and start playing around. And the more you do, the more comfortable you get, and the more things will start making sense. So it's a great program. It has a lot of potential. You can start out with the free version at no cost at all. And then once you decide it's for you and you're making things and doing great things with it, then you can consider getting the studio version, the 299. But I think it's a great deal. I really like Blackmagic is doing where they'll upgrade the program and they'll let you upgrade once you own it at no additional cost. So once you own it, you pretty much own it. And then you're eligible for any upgrades in the future, which is absolutely fantastic. And I think the greatest feature it probably has is the camera tracking. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.